Hello, one of the viewers of this channel has asked me to do a video clip about vibrating strings. Now I really like guitars, so vibrating strings are something I like to think about a lot. Um, I've got a little guitar right here, although I make guitars, I didn't make this one, I bought this one, and I like it. And let me, let's talk a little bit about vibrating strings on guitars. Now the string is basically pinned there and there. This, this piece is called the bridge and there's the saddle on it right there. And that piece is called the nut and they, they form the ends of the string. So if I uh, plug the string it vibrates, but it doesn't vibrate at just any frequency. It vibrates at a very specific frequency and so do the other five strings. So that when I pluck them one at a time, They don't sound too bad. And then when I go to make a chord, sounds about right. And I can actually sort of make music. Okay, that's all you're going to get out of me. I can build them, but I can't play them very well. Now, the expression that describes frequency of a vibrating string is very simple and it's easy to work with and it's fairly informative. So let's take a look at that right now. I'll put my guitar down. Okay, the expression that define, that describes a string is it says frequency equals, well it's actually n over 2 pi, 2l I should say, t over rho. Okay, now I gotta make sure and write this correctly, rho is string. Alright, that's frequency in hertz. That's an n. It doesn't look like an n. Let's try this again. There's an n. n is an integer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. 2, l is the length from the bridge to the saddle. That's called the scale length of the guitar. This is tension, and that's mass per unit length of the string. Let me write that out here. Okay. The strings we're looking at are made out of steel. Now some of them are wound with a second wire and some of them aren't. So right now we're just looking at the plain wire ones. And we'll worry about the windings later. The, let's look at the B string also. There's six strings. And from lowest to highest pitch they go E, A, D, G, B, E. Okay? So on this guitar it goes E, A, D, G, B, E. Well there's the B string. Right there. That's the one we're worried about. That's the one we're going to uh, use for our example here. And the frequency of a B string, this comes out of um, music, the fact that A is a 440 hertz uh, tone that's defined by ISO standards. We can calculate this. Okay? It's actually 246.94 something. 247 is close enough. The diameter of that particular string is 0.41 millimeters. Okay? 00041 meters, and the density of steel is 7850 kilograms per cubic meter. Now this is approximate, I'm not sure what flavor of steel they use, and there might be a little bit of a protective uh, coating on the outside of it, probably a, a, another metal that resists uh, corrosion. But that's probably pretty close for what we're looking for. It's an approximation, but it's a good approximation. So, we know everything in this except T right there. It might be interesting to know what the tension in the string is required to be in order to meet that frequency. So let's do that. If I, if I do a little algebra here, actually before I do that, let's talk about one other thing, that N. Strings, like everything else, have many vibrational frequencies. There's many frequencies at which strings like to vibrate. Unlike almost all other structures, the higher frequencies are integer multiples of the fundamental. That's one of the reasons why it's easy to make stringed instruments, because when you take a frequency and you, the, and you double that frequency, that's going from 1 to 2 there, that's also increasing that frequency by an octave. Well, the octave is one of the most basic structures of music. So the fact that you've got something that likes to vibrate in octaves, well, that's handy. That's very handy. The only other thing I can think of off the top of my head that does that is air columns. They do that too. So you can see that there's flutes and piccolos and trumpets and all these other stringed in, or, uh, air instruments, organ pipes, things like that. So air columns and strings, good things to make musical instruments out of. So for right now, let's make those both a one. Okay, and I'll just leave that as F. That's going to be the fundamental. And let's push a, push a few symbols around here and solve for T, the tension. So t, t is going to be 4L squared, uh, F squared, and rho string. I think I got that right. 
this to double check here. Yep, got it right. Okay, so all I have to do is put those numbers in here, and I should back out the be able to back out the tension of the string. Now, the, the nice part about this is I can check this. This is a package of strings, and this one is made by a company called Daddario. Uh, they make pretty good strings. There are other good string manufacturers, but then these are one of them. The nice part about these strings is that they have the tension printed right on the back of the package. And I know that for the string that we're looking at right here, which is 0.41 millimeters in diameter, that's 0.016 inches, 16 thousandths of an inch if you want to do it that way, the tension is 23.3 pounds or 10.57 kilograms. There's only one problem with this. We all know kilograms is not a unit of force, it's a unit of mass. But since it gets universally used as a unit of force anyway, kilograms is probably okay. Practically speaking, anytime anybody ever uses newtons for force in the SI system is when they're doing some kind of technical calculation. All right, so in fact, you're going to get uh, tension in newtons here in a few minutes. Okay, so let's put all these numbers in here. Okay, one other thing, row of the string, that is the mass per unit length of the string. So rho of the string equals rho of the steel times the cross-sectional area, and that's 7850 times pi times the diameter squared over 4. So that's uh, 0 0.41 times 10 to the minus third meters over 4, and we'll square that and that's times pi, and when I do that, I get, oh boy, let's see, 1.036 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per meter. Kilograms per meter, mass per unit length, so that's just about right. Now, or that the units are exactly right, what I'm looking for now is to make sure I put all the units in the, the simplest possible state. So I want kilograms, meters, I'm going to stay away from millimeters, and any other non-fundamental non, uh, unit. So let's put all those numbers in here. 4 times 0 0.648 squared times 247 squared times 1.036 times 10 to the minus 3. Oops. Okay, there's that. Now I've done a bad thing. I haven't put my units in there, but we're all adults here. You can, you can put the units in later. And what I come out with is let's see 106.202 newtons and that equals 23.875 pounds. Okay, well I got 23.3 pounds on the back of the package, so that's pretty close. I've made a few approximations, so that's pretty good. Now, I've gotten believable numbers, but I've also learned one other thing. What if I want to, where's my, there it is. What if I want to change the pitch of a string? There's two reasons I'd want to do that. One is to play the string. So if that's, uh, let's see, that's an A string, that's 110 hertz. What if I want to double the frequency of that string? I can increase the tension, or I can shorten the string by putting my finger down on the fretboard here and pressing it against that little metal piece there called a fret, and effectively shortening the string. Now it just turns out that fret right there is halfway between the nut and the saddle. So if that's 110, that's 220. Okay, that's music. So one way I can change the pitch of the string is to change L. The other way I can change the pitch of the string, sort of changing the density, but I don't know how to do that, um, is to change tension. Well, why would I change tension? Let's go back to the A string. What if I want to tune the guitar? Maybe you can hear that. There's too high, there's low again, okay? I can tune the guitar by changing the tension, and I can play the guitar by changing the length of the string. One last thing I want to tell you here is that uh, this expression, simple though it is, has one big approximation in it, and that's that the string has no bending stiffness. Okay, this is what's called an ideal string expression. And everybody designs musical instruments using this. It gets used absolutely all the time because it's so simple, so easy to work with. Here's a structure that really does have zero bending stiffness. This is a chain, okay? I can pull on this all I want, and the stiffness along the chain is, well, 
for my purpose, is essentially infinite. It's not like I can stretch this. But its bending stiffness is zero. I can wad it up like that and unfold it, and it's fine. So this is a structure with a very large tension along the axis, and no, or large stiffness, I should say, along the axis, and no stiffness at all in bending. Well, guitar wire, the wire they make strings out of, is not does not quite have zero bending stiffness. It's very low, but low and zero are different. They're not quite the same thing. So if you have zero bending stiffness, that's the case. If you have low bending stiffness, there's actually some other uh, terms that would go on this expression, and I can maybe talk about those later. All right? So as you go higher up in the, in the uh, register, higher up the neck, the strings start sounding a little bit too sharp. The pitch is a little bit too high. The frequency is a little bit too high. And the way we fix that, I don't know if you can see this here, this guitar has a saddle there. That forms the end of the string, that little plastic saddle. Notice, okay, it's not perpendicular to the center line of the instrument. Okay, let me put it this way, perhaps. You can see there it is, that it's not perpendicular to the center line of the instrument. And the reason why it's not perpendicular is to account for those extra terms, those bending stiffness terms and some other stuff, that aren't there. That corrects this. So next time you go into a store, you pick up your own guitar, look at the saddle and you'll notice it's not probably not uh, perpendicular to the center line of the string, unless it's a classical guitar. Nylon strings have a bend, have a, a elastic modulus so low it doesn't really matter. But any steel string instrument, you know that saddle is a little off, or if there's individual saddles, you know that they get gradually farther away from the nut as the string gets bigger and bigger. That's why. So there you have it. There's vibrations of a guitar string. We started with a simple expression here, plug some numbers in, got about the right answer, and looked at why tension, changing that term there, lets you tune the guitar. That lets you play the guitar.